Hello, my name's Richard Kent. I want to talk today about your respiratory system. We've all got a respiratory system. And the purpose of our respiratory system is to get oxygen from the air into our blood system and get it to all of the cells in our body. We have a hundred trillion cells in our body and they all require two really vital things. They require oxygen and glucose. Now the respiratory system is designed to get oxygen from the air into your blood circulation and the most important um, organ in your body which uses 20% of the energy available in your body is your brain which weighs three pounds and uses 20% of the energy. Now if you were to uh, put a string around my neck so that the blood doesn't get to my brain in three seconds I will be unconscious. That's how important oxygen is to my brain. If you kept that string around my neck within three minutes I would be absolutely dead. So your respiratory system is really important but it is also completely miraculous. Your respiratory system it looks like two large sponges but the surface area inside those sponges is about the surface area of two tennis courts. So can you imagine two tennis courts inside your chest wall? Now the chest, the, those two sponges let's call them lungs, uh, they move, they move um, up and down because your thoracic cage moves up and down and your diaphragm moves down and basically expands and contracts your lungs 15 times a minute on average. If you're running, you'll breathe much faster, you'll breathe in that faster than that, but on average about 15 times a minute. Now, as we breathe in and out, we either breathe in through our nose, which actually um, moisturizes the air and takes particles of dust and bacteria and fungi out of the air, and then down into our larynx and our pharynx, and then God had to devise a very clever device, the epiglottis and the larynx, to protect your lungs. Because remember, we eat food and we swallow liquids through our mouth and the one thing that the lungs cannot cope with at all is food or liquid in our lungs. So were you supposed, suppose you were to, like yesterday I was running and I swallowed a fly, which is a really silly thing to do, but God had decided an instant reflex so my larynx closes instantly so the fly went into my stomach not into my lungs. Now can you imagine the problem the evolutionists would have because how long have you got to develop the, uh, the laryngeal spasm to prevent the fly going into the lungs because if the fly goes into the lungs, lungs you're going to develop pneumonia and die. Let's now look at the actual lungs themselves. The, uh, the, the throat the uh, leads into the trachea, which is a large tube, which then leads into um, bronchi, smaller tubes, and then to bronchioles, which are even smaller. And as I said, we breathe in and out 15 times a minute, and the, um, the lungs expand and contract as the thoracic cage moves up up and outwards and then down and the diaphragm does the same. But the end point is the alveoli which are little tiny sacs. They're, you have to have a microscope to see them and there are millions and millions of these little tiny alveoli. And here is the miracle. They would collapse if within the alveoli there was not a surfactant present, which is actually God's fairy liquid. You see the surface tension in the alveoli is so high that the little air sacs called alveoli would collapse completely if it wasn't for the surfactant present, which is like it is a detergent and reduces the surface tension within the air sacs so they don't collapse which causes a massive problem for the evolutionists because they like to say that 
uh, 3.8 billion years ago, life evolved from the primordial slime and the circulatory system and the nervous system and the alimentary system and the respiratory system and all the other systems happened by chance. But no, that couldn't be, because for in order for you, uh, for you and for me to breathe, we must have a fully developed brain to uh, tell our thoracic cage when to breathe in and our diaphragm when to breathe in and out. We must have a fully developed circulatory system to provide the haemoglobin uh, to, the, to the little alveoli because there's, a, there's a, a, a gradient, an oxygen gradient across the alveoli from, alveoli from high, high PO2 to low PO2 in the blood. This is how haemoglobin is another miracle which collects oxygen. All this has got to happen but it's got to happen with the, in, the, with the present, in the presence of this detergent called surfactant. No surfactant present, no alveoli, because they would all have collapsed. The whole evolution concept is ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. Um, it is one example of what we call irreducible complexity. You cannot have a respiratory system without a fully developed nervous system, skeletal system, circulatory system and surfactant. I hope you find that interesting. Just remember that God is fantastic and made everything. Everything is supernatural about your body. Your respiratory system is supernatural. Everything about you is supernatural. God bless you and thanks for listening.